I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This is the last video in a six-part series, and if you've made it this far, congratulations. In this last video, I'm going to go over retrosynthesis. So I'm taking all the information that you learned in the first five videos and putting it all together to help you work backwards from a final product to find out what ketone or aldehyde reactants made it. I hope you'll agree with me by the end of this video that it's not difficult at all. It's actually quite an easy process. Retrosynthesis is usually the scariest part of any exam, but with aldols, it doesn't really have to be like that. There's a really simple, straightforward process to work through aldol retrosynthesis. A lot of aldol synthesis questions start out like this. Show how you would form this molecule from ketones or aldehydes of less than or equal to four carbons. So that means we're allowed to start with ketones or aldehydes that have four carbons or less. So the first thing I would do is count carbons on this molecule. It has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So since there's a total of eight, that means we can put two four carbon molecules together to make it. So that's easy, because that's what aldol addition is. It's two four carbon molecules coming together to make an eight carbon molecule. So that means I can just basically divide it in half. I can find the two molecules that came together to make it. And that's what these steps are all about. Breaking this up into the two molecules that came together to form it. Now these are the specific steps for if you start with a beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone. Remember a beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone is the one where you have a carbonyl, there's your alpha carbon, and there's your beta carbon with a hydroxy on it. We're going to have slightly different steps for when you have the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone. Remember this one comes from the addition product. The alpha-beta unsaturated one comes from the elimination product, the true condensation. Each one is really easy to do. We just are going to look at them a little bit differently. So I'm going to teach you how to do this kind first, okay? So here's how we handle this. The first thing we're going to do is find the carbon between the OH and the carbonyl carbon. So here's the hydroxy carbon right here. Here's the carbonyl carbon right here and there's the carbon in between them. We're just going to label it the alpha carbon. Then what we're going to do is break the bond between the alpha carbon and the hydroxy carbon. And whenever I say break a bond, I mean erase the bond. So that's really convenient for me on a whiteboard because I can just go like this. Now for you, that might mean doing the true retrosynthesis and actually redrawing them. And then our next step is to magically turn that hydroxy carbon right here into a carbonyl carbon. So this isn't a hydroxy carbon anymore, it's a carbonyl. Those are the two molecules that created our beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde. And look, it's perfect. They're both the same molecule, which is pretty typical for a standard aldol addition. Now our next step is simply to decide what reagent made this happen. We have to choose a base. And here's how we choose a base. It all depends on what our alpha carbons look like in the starting materials that we've created. What kind of alpha carbons do we have? And specifically, what alpha carbon is the one that attacked? This is the alpha carbon that we identified, right? This one right here, which is right here. And we need to look on this molecule and say, did that molecule have multiple alpha carbons? Could it have chosen from different ones? And in this case, no, there was only one alpha carbon because there was a hydrogen on this side. So we can choose any base we want. We can use LDA, we can use sodium methoxide, sodium hydroxide, whatever. So I'm just gonna use sodium ethoxide. Perfect, I'm done. However, there are gonna be cases where there will be multiple alpha protons or alpha carbons to choose from. And when that's the case, we need to think about did we use 
the least hindered one, the kinetic one, because then we got to use LDA. Or if we choose the most hindered one, the thermodynamic one, we need to use a base that will promote the thermodynamic product. So make sure you write this down because we're going to be using this in future examples. And I'm going to give you some examples to practice as well. Here's a second example we can try. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 carbons. And thankfully, we've got six carbon molecules to work with. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we know we're going to be able to divide this up in half. And that's fantastic. So we can just go ahead and work through these steps. We want to find the carbon between the hydroxy carbon and the carbonyl carbon. That's this one. So we know this is the alpha carbon. We're going to break the bond between the alpha carbon and the hydroxy carbon. I'm just going to erase that. And then I'm going to turn that hydroxy carbon into a carbonyl. Perfect, right? And they look just the same, so we know we've got two identical molecules. That makes a lot of sense. Now, I've just got to decide on a base. What base did I use to make these? Well, in this case, there were two alpha protons to choose from. But we didn't choose this one, the more hindered one. We chose this one, the less hindered one. So we need to use LDA. LDA gives the kinetic product. And that's all we have to do. That's it. You ready to try one on your own? What starting material or materials would you use to make this product? And don't freak out. Go through these exact same steps. I promise I'm not going to do you wrong. Hopefully you looked here between the carbonyl carbon and the hydroxy carbon and labeled this one the alpha. Then you erased the bond between the alpha carbon and the hydroxy carbon and then turned this hydroxy carbon into a carbonyl carbon. Now you can see our original starting material. If I stretch it out a little bit, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And it would look like that, although this is a perfectly acceptable way to draw it. Now, one thing to notice is that since this was our alpha carbon, you may think, well, our alpha carbon is the less hindered alpha carbon, and we chose a less hindered one rather than the more hindered one, so we would want LDA to be our base. And LDA is a perfectly fine choice for your base, but this is an intramolecular aldol condensation, and what's interesting about this is that you could have also chosen sodium hydroxide or sodium methoxide or whatever for your base, and that would have worked as well too. If you need a little review on this, you may want to go back and watch the intramolecular video again. The reason why these bases would work as well is because if you did choose one of these bases to give you the thermodynamic product on the more hindered alpha carbon, and it tried to attack right here, that would give you a three-membered ring, which is thermodynamically unfavorable. And it's just not going to happen. So even with one of those bases, it would still choose this carbon instead to give you the more favorable five-membered ring. Next, let's look at retrosynthesis of the alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes and ketones that result from the full condensation reactions that occur in warm temperatures or from reactions that occur in conjugated systems. The alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes and ketones look like this, and they seem like they'd be harder to do retrosynthesis on, but they really aren't. These are the steps that we used to do retrosynthesis on the beta hydroxy aldehydes and ketones. And all I've done is change the ordering because I added one more step at the very beginning. Our first step is just to turn this back into a beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone, and then we're going to do the exact same steps after that. Our first step is we're just going to take this carbon carbon double bond and reduce it. That means we're going to turn it back into a single bond. And we're going to put that beta OH back where it used to be before it got reduced. So 
before this group looked like this. It looked like this, a single bond here and three C's between the O's. It was a beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone. And we're just gonna put it back like it used to be. We're gonna reduce this down to a single bond and we're gonna put our hydroxy back on the beta. And you're gonna know that it looks right because you're gonna be able to go O, one, two, three, O, just like we've practiced a million times. That is step one. Then these steps are exactly like what we've been doing before. You can do this. We're gonna find the carbon between these and we're gonna label it alpha. We're gonna break the bond between the alpha and the hydroxy carbon. And then we're gonna turn this hydroxy group into a carbonyl. These are our two starting materials. What kind of aldol reaction was this? It was a crossed aldol. See how we have two different reactants? One of them had an alpha carbon, but there's no alpha carbon here that can be turned into an enol or enolate. And there's only a hydrogen here, and this alpha carbon doesn't have any protons. So this was perfect for a crossed aldol. So what base should we have used? It really doesn't matter, right? Because there was only one possibility of aldol. So it didn't matter if we chose the kinetic or the thermodynamic product. Any base would work just fine. Do you think you're ready to try this one? Why don't you give it a shot? Just hit pause and do your best at doing step one and then backing it all the way out to the original two ketone or aldehyde functional groups that created it. And also pick what base you think would be best. And then we'll come back and compare. Here are my results. The first thing I did was remove my double bond and attach a hydroxy group here to the beta carbon. Here's the alpha, here's the beta. So I got this. Then I removed the bonds or just erased the bond between the alpha and the beta carbon and I turned my hydroxy group into a carbonyl which gave me this molecule. And in order to draw it a little bit prettier, which again isn't necessary, I counted my total carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I drew it out this way, which does look pretty cool, right? And then I decided on what base to use. Each of these carbonyls only has one type of beta or alpha carbon. There's the more hindered one, and then there's no alpha carbon over here. So it really doesn't matter what kind of base we use. Um, I just chose the weaker base. And I noted that I could have used whatever kind I wanted. And of course we want to use heat because that's what's going to force the elimination part of the reaction. Here are four more problems that you can practice just to confirm that you've got these concepts down. Some of them are alpha, beta, unsaturated condensation products that were done in heat or on conjugated systems. And some of them are beta hydroxy addition products. So I'm just gonna throw them all at you. I'm gonna let you hit pause and complete the reactants and the um, reaction conditions for all four of them. And then let's come back and compare and see how you did. With number one, you can see we've got a hydroxy group, not a carbon-carbon double bond. So we know this was just an aldol addition, not a condensation, and it was probably done in cold temperatures. Our job is just to find the carbonyl carbon, the hydroxy carbon, and find the carbon in the middle and identify it as the alpha. Then we're gonna erase the bond between the alpha and the hydroxy carbon, and then turn that hydroxy carbon into a carbonyl. This was our starting material. And if we wanted to redraw it, we could say there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there are carbonyls on these two carbons. And if I wanted to decide what kind of base to use, I could say, well, the alpha was the more hindered, not the less hindered. And the more hindered one points to a hydroxide or alkoxide base rather than LDA. But this is an intramolecular aldol. 
And in the intramolecular aldols, the alpha carbon that we choose more depends on the size of the ring we're making than it depends on which base. So we really could go with LDA or with one of the alkoxide oxide bases and it probably wouldn't matter. But that being the case, if it doesn't matter, let's choose the one that points to the more hindered carbon. So I'm going to choose like sodium um, alkoxide, oxide, like methoxide or ethoxide or something like that. All right, let's move on to number two. Here we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So we know we've got an elimination product. Elimination products occur in heat or in conjugated systems. And this is a conjugated system. We have this double bond conjugated not only with the carbonyl, but also with the benzene ring. And since it's conjugated, we actually don't need to use heat to make this elimination happen. Our job to predict the reactants that formed this is first to identify our alpha and beta right here, turn this back into a single bond, and put our OH back on the beta carbon. That's what it would have looked like if it was an addition product. Then we're going to use the same steps we used before. We're going to identify the alpha, reduce, or I'm sorry, um, break the bond, erase the bond between the alpha and the beta hydroxy. And we're going to turn that beta hydroxy into a carbonyl. Now you can see what our reactants looked like before we started. And this was a crossed aldol. We know that because these are two different reactants. Then we need to decide on what base to use. And it's all about these two carbons. Which alpha carbon did we use, the more hindered or the less hindered one? This is the less hindered of the two alpha carbons, so we need to use the base that suggests that, and that would be LDA. Moving on to number three. Again, we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So we know we did an elimination, the condensation reaction. And again, we have a conjugated system, so we didn't necessarily need heat in order to make this happen. We're gonna remove the double bond. We're gonna reduce it back down to single. And we're gonna put an OH on the beta carbon. Now we're gonna erase the bond between the alpha and the beta. And we're gonna turn this back into a carbonyl. And we have another cross aldol. Here was our alpha that attacked. And there was only one choice of alpha on this molecule. So it doesn't really matter what base we use. We could use LDA or one of our alkoxide or hydroxide bases. Any one would be fine. Now we've got this guy. Here's our carbonyl, alpha, beta carbon. We have a beta hydroxy. Here's our alpha. We're going to remove the bond between the alpha and the beta hydroxy. We're going to change this into a carbonyl. Those are our starting materials to acid aldehydes. And we only had one choice of alpha carbon, so we can use any base we want, LDA or one of our alkoxide or hydroxide bases. Hopefully by now you can see that this is a pretty straightforward and maybe even easy process. If you're having any trouble or if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments or contact me through my website. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.